On today's West Ham News show, I am going to be discussing the revelations that Mikel Antonio outlined in a recent podcast regarding uh, his mental struggles. I'm also going to be discussing uh, the announcement today from West Ham that Tilo Kera will join AS Monaco on a permanent basis at the end of the season. And also a little moment uh, on David Moyes uh, as he prepares for his final West Ham United game and whether uh, our performance on Sunday will be linked to helping former captain Declan Rice. All of that is coming up on today's West Ham News Show right here on West Ham Unofficial. We're going to start with the news of Mikel Antonio's recent uh, struggles that he has uh, opened up about in a recent podcast uh, with Jake Humphrey on high performance. So Mikel Antonio has revealed his mental struggles that he's been dealing with recently, outlining his desire to get injured as uh, the burden of playing football became too much to the striker. This was devastating when I read this and uh, and watched the podcast interview. You can just see how much it's affected him. I've got uh, you know more quotes from uh, the podcast. Um, he revealed that therapy changed his life um, after a really difficult divorce, which of course uh, caused lots um, of issues for the Jamaican striker. I just started disliking the game. Uh, I began therapy because I was really struggling. I was going through my divorce and honestly couldn't get my head around it. After we won the Conference League, Antonio stated the whole team went out, the gaffer went out, got steaming. A couple of the boys didn't sleep for two days, just got drunk for two days straight. I was asleep on the coach and went back to the hotel straight away. I was just mentally drained because of everything that was going on outside of my football. And then I went back to the hotel and went to sleep while everyone was out partying. I started therapy because I was struggling and how I grew up, it was never a thing. I thought therapy was for crazy people, but therapy changed my life. I was just talking to the therapist and I just burst out into tears. I was uncontrollable. That gave me relief. And that's actually quite difficult for me um, to read because it's, you know, we we sit here and we talk about the football uh, and we talk about performances and we criticise performances of footballers. But at the end of the day, you don't know what's going on in these people's personal lives. You know, the amount of money they're being paid, it still doesn't prevent this sort of stuff. And the more footballers come out and they're open about this, and you know, some people just can't. I understand that completely. <coughs> Excuse me. But the more people like Mikel Antonio have come out and actually um, not not admit, because it's not a bad thing, um, it's good that he's opening up and it's raising awareness first and foremost. And it's also just putting into the back of people's minds that not everything, you know, when it looks well is, is, is you know, quite as good. And it's fundamental that we look after our mates and we make sure everyone's all right. And again, this is, an, this is another example of this. Miguel Antonio has been struggling and maybe that reflected on his performances as I was, uh, as I was thinking about this uh, a little bit earlier on, um, you know, last season and coming to this season. And he's got therapy, therapy. He's got help and fair play to him. He seems to be in a better place now, but it takes some real balls, takes some real guts to to come out publicly and, um, and dump all of that there. And McKen Antonio has done that and I give full credit to him. Hopefully he's been getting, it sounds like he's been getting the help that he needs and he's getting back on track. Uh, and, you know, uh, it can be uh, the man we all know and love as Mikel Antonio, the bubbly uh, and chatty and uh, funny Mikel Antonio, of course. So, look, I mean, that's the damning part of it on the screen there, isn't it? That he wanted to get injured so he didn't have to play football. It felt like a bird. It felt like a chore. It felt like something he just couldn't complete at times and he wanted to get injured to alleviate the pressure of playing football whilst he was uh, tackling these uh, psychological struggles and, uh, and mental health issues and um, I do feel sorry for him I really really do and if uh, and if you don't then uh, I think it's quite heartless to be honest and uh, hopefully as I said he can get back uh, on track. Moving on to other West Ham news today regarding Tilo Kera. West Ham have confirmed that defender Tilo Kera has joined AS Monaco on a permanent contract for an undisclosed fee. He has spent the second half of the 2023 24 season on loan at the French Ligue 1 side. I was quite critical of this um of this transfer. I didn't want to see him leave if I'm totally honest. Um and we it left us even um you know shorter uh in terms of squad depth and uh, I'd love to keep him. I think there's some real potential in Tilo Care. Unfortunately once again it's the same old story. West Ham haven't got the potential 
out of the player. We never really got to see the proper Tilo Kerr, only on a couple of occasions, uh, most notably uh, on that bus parade tour. That was uh, a moment to go down a West Ham folklore hymn going, oh, um, after the Conference League win. And look, no, I haven't got too much uh, bad to say. He uh, he made 12 appearances for the Hammers um, at the start of the campaign and he went to uh, the French side in early January and, um, and look, he's now completed a move there in his 17 outings for for uh, the French champions Monaco so far, uh, Kerr has helped Hutter's men secure second place in the table and a return to the main draw of the Champions League. So um, I just made a mistake there. So he's made 12 appearances um, for Monaco uh, so far in his loan spell and they've decided to make the deal permanent. And it's a little bit disappointing because, as I said, I don't think we got the full potential out of Tilo Kerr in Claret and Blue. I think he was slightly misunderstood and slightly wasn't given the opportunity that other players have. Um, and I like Vladimir Sufal, don't get me wrong. Uh, but I think Tilo Kerr was slightly mistreated. Um, and yeah, I, I just feel that fair play to him that he's moved on. And uh, look, you can't blame him. He wasn't getting game time uh, at West Ham sufficient enough for him. Um, and it looks like obviously he's happy, more happy at Monaco. And, uh, and I wish him all the best for the future. He never did anything particularly bad. In a West Ham shirt, he was neat and tidy with what he did. He had some pace, which we desperately lacked at points uh, over the last 12 months. Maybe he wasn't up to the standard of Vladimir Sufal in terms of defensively, but his all-round game, I think, probably matched uh, the Czech uh, right back. And uh, yeah, I think he was probably mistreated slightly, which is a little bit disappointing. But look, at the end of the day, football's football. Um, and that's the decision that has been made. He's going to stay at AS Monaco. He's going to make that deal permanent. Uh, and he is departing. West Ham United. A bit of a stop-start spell uh, at the club for Kara, which, as I said, is a little bit um, frustrating, but it is what it is. My final piece of news bringing you today was not on the main uh, screen. It is regarding David Moyes. In his final pre-match press conference today, David Moyes declared that the performance that the Etihad had on Sunday is for West Ham. And it's not for Declan Rice, of course. This came amid claims the Hammers are going to help their former captain, Declan Rice lift that Premier League trophy. If we get a draw um, or better at the Etihad and Arsenal beat Everton, the Premier League title will will go to North London. If we lose to Manchester City, uh, no matter what happens, the title will stay uh, in Manchester. It will stay at the Etihad. And that's really the result and the outcome that most West Ham fans uh, want and would probably prefer us uh, just to concede a couple of goals uh, if it means that uh, Arsenal do not win uh, the league. Now that there's a um, there's a respectable amount um, of admiration for Declan Rice at West Ham and of course the professional level of, you know, David Moyes ain't going to go on and say we hate Rice in the pre-match press conference, is he? Of course not. Uh, but he was pretty stern in his words, David Moyes, where he was saying that we're not doing this. We're not going to go up there and try and win for Rice. We're doing it for West Ham, uh, which is commendable, of course. Look, whether we win, lose or draw, we're finishing ninth at the end of the season and David Moyes is departing the club. This game is massively... Um, in it, unimportant it means zero it means next to nothing uh for west ham going forward of course we'd all prefer man city to win the league so push comes to shove that's the scenario that we prefer and if we've got to help do our you know do our bit in that and um uh, you know as a fan base then we will i think on sunday and uh look, the most important thing on sunday is to give david Moyes the send off that he deserves that's my underlining statement that i want to make champions europe you made us sing that should be the chant uh let's as a classy contingent um you know, let's let let's be that classy contingent. Go out there uh, as the away section and give David Moyes one final farewell because boy, uh, does he deserve it. It's been some thorny times, some really thorny times, but uh, we can look past those for the glory days, for the for the nights in Prague and Leon and that night against Sevilla, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that David Moyes has declared that De the Declan Rice factor will play no part in West Ham's performance game and result. Uh, on Sunday at the Etihad, which is good to hear from David Moyes. So that's it for me. That is you up to date with all the latest West Ham news until the next one. Thank you very much. Come on, you eyes. I've been Jake. This is West Ham Unofficial. And until the next one, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.